healings in the ministry of Jesus. We want to talk about some different things because uh, one of the things that we like to uh, present as, as a case for healing being um, God's will, new covenant uh, principle, um, really a biblical principle. If you go back and say God even named himself Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. Um, so, you know, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. So if he, if he is our healer, um, then he, he remains our healer. He didn't stop being our healer. Um, and um, so much of the church wants us to have a mindset that, that sickness is the main tool of God to bring people into submission and to subjection, uh, that sickness comes from heaven. And you, got, you hear people praying or, or saying, we don't, know what, we don't know why the Lord does what the Lord does, and we don't understand why the Lord's doing what he's doing, but he has a reason. And, and they, take, they take a position of, of absolute sovereignty. Uh, and God is sovereign when, when, when you sovereignly bind yourself by your word. Um, you can't sovereignly unbind yourself by your word. Okay, that makes you double-minded or a liar. God is, God doesn't, he's not a man that he should lie. Uh, so when he made himself Jehovah Rapha, and really, uh, I say he made himself Jehovah Rapha, he just, he just was called Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord that healeth thee, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy physician, uh, the Lord thy healer. But it wasn't he made himself that, at that point, that's who he was. You know, that was, uh, that, um, if you study uh, Scof Schofield referring to the, the phrase Jehovah, now we understand Jehovah comes from the four Hebrew letters Y-H, uh, W-H. Uh, some people have translated Yahweh, add some vowels in there, make it Yahweh. But, um, you know, there, there are no J's in Hebrew. When the German translators were translating, they took the, that and made the Y a J, added some vowels, came up with Jehovah. So Yahweh or Jehovah are the same, come from the same four letters. You'll see it in your King James Bible. I don't know if the other Bible is but the King James Bible, when you see the word Lord and all four caps, capital, but the, the small caps, um, that is that word, that, that is that Y-H-W-H in the, in the Old Testament. And so, uh, just be aware of that. But you know, Yahweh and, and, or Jehovah, uh, Schofield says, is the, ever, is the increasing self-revelation of God. The, is the God who keeps his covenant, the God of the covenant. And so the hyphenated names are that, that progressive revelation to us from God. Now, not that we get some revelation that didn't come out anywhere. God's revealing himself progressively by these compound covenant names. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Desikanu, uh, Jehovah uh, Shalom, Jehovah Shama, um, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, uh, the different names in which it, he goes through the Bible uh, in, in, in that period of time of revelation to Israel of who he is and what he is. Um, he does this. The very first compound covenant name God uses and or is given to God in, in the Jehovah compound names is found in Exodus where he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord thy healer. Amen. Well, we thank God for that, don't we? Praise God. We thank God he is a healer. Uh, he is our physician, the Lord thy physician. It can be translated, the Lord thy physician, the Lord thy healer. And excuse me, I set this up wrong, and it's just going to aggravate me. The Hallelujah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Now I can, I can move my feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so... God reveals himself as a healer. Now, when we come into the new covenant, it doesn't mean that God stops being who he was. Now, the, the, the book of Hebrews says we have a, a, a new covenant established upon better promises. Didn't say that we had a old, a, a new, another covenant that wasn't quite as good as the first one, but hey, you get to go to heaven. Hallelujah. And, you know, so God didn't stop being Jehovah Rapha just because we got a, a better covenant or a new covenant established upon better promises. Amen. Now listen, if you go get, a, you know, I mean, let's face it. Now I was, I was looking for a, um, a new minivan before we went to um, Tulsa. We were thinking about buying a new van because mine has a hundred, right now it has over 150,000 on it because we, we, we rolled up uh, about 2,200 miles on the trip to Tulsa. So it, it shot it on up over 150,000. And uh, we, were, we were, James concerned, you know, well, 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 you know, it's getting older. Well, honey, <laughs> okay. And so I started looking and I started looking and you can't, you can't probably find any of the, uh, them with the uh, um, DVD system in it. Well, I want the DVD system. 
Hello. I mean, you got to ride you know, 18 hours. You want to be? You want your DVD system up there in the ceiling? I don't want hung on the back of the seat or some post market thing where they go in there and cut out the head headrest and stick them in there, and you can't see it from the third row. And then you got to add a third one back there somewhere so somebody back there can see it. And they can't put them up top because of this new thing they got up there. You know, it's 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 new, but it ain't better. I mean, they got this head this this liner thing now, and some of these caravans that are just dumb. It's got green lights up there. So you can ride down the road and, you know, it lights up real subtly uh, the inside for the, I guess, for the kids to do whatever they're doing, you know, but you can't put your TV up there. The, you know, you have to, you have to have it done at the factory without that particular setup put in there. You can't get it. And all, everyone I was looking for all had that stupid setup in it and you couldn't get a TV put up top. They can't do it. You know, so it's, it's not wired that way. You can't do it. I'm like, well, la da da well, I don't want your van. How about that? You know, because I want, I want the new, but I want the better. You know, I want all the cool stuff and what I had before. Now, if I go back, you know, uh, if I go back and out and get less than I had before, then I don't get new and better. And to get a better, so when it comes to the covenant, we got a better covenant, a new covenant established upon better promises. So it wasn't that we got lessened. Some people act like that, you know, G Jesus, I mean, in the, the old covenant, God would heal, but under the new covenant, he makes everybody sick. Hello. And they get everything kind of, kind of, uh, uh, you know, cockeyed and backwards and all that kind of stuff. When we go through the, uh, the ministry of Jesus, what we find out is we can't find anybody that came to Jesus in faith and walked away without getting what they came for. Amen. He even tried to run, run one woman off. Master, my, my, my daughter left home grievously vexed over the devil. She was a Syrophoenician woman. And he said, woman, what have I to do with thee? You know, is it me to take, he said, is it me or is it right to take the children's bread and give it to dogs? She said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall for the master's table. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I, I mean, she, she, see, cause she, because she was a Syrophoenician, she didn't have covenant right to it. Remember, he said it was a, he didn't want right to take the children's bread, the covenant people of Israel, and give it to dogs, somebody outside the covenant. And she said, yeah, Lord, but even dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then what happened was he had to get her to receive, to get over into faith, even outside the covenant. And she did, and she got it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it was never that we didn't want to do it. Hallelujah, but it wasn't, based, it wasn't based on her covenant right to it. She had to do it by faith. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. So let's look at a couple here. And um, actually, I believe, I believe there, are, are, um, there, are 19, there are 19 recorded different healings. Now, if you take all the different four Gospels, and, and, and you can count like, I think, 38 37, something like that, different accounts of healings between the Gospels, but they overlap. Okay, does that make sense? You know, the Synoptic Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, record a lot of the exact same events. John will record stuff that the other three don't, and they'll record things that he doesn't. But of all the healings from all four of the Gospels, uh, if you add them up, they're somewhere in the 30s, but only 19 of them are different. In other words, about 15 of them are recorded multiply. Okay, so we, we don't, um, you know, we can't count them as 38 healings in the ministry of Jesus that we recorded. No, we may have 19 different, but through the different, different gospels they're recorded more than one time. In John's gospel, the fourth chapter in the 46th verse, <clears throat> it says, So Jesus came into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water into wine, or made wine water, or <laughs> right, where he made the water wine. I was trying to read it, uh, Ed Taylor version. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was coming out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. And Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And the, the so, no man said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my, my child die. And Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Listen to this. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Now, 
Notice, now up until this point, he's kind of looking for Jesus to get the job done. But Jesus gives the word. I'm going to tell you something. Um, faith can arise in your heart on a word from God and jump on that and receive it right then. You know, I've been in meetings where, you know, healing ministries. I've been there with Dad Hagen ministry. And you tell people to do something. And they, can't, you know, they came up not really knowing what to, you know, they, they knew they wanted to come get healed. And, and, then, when that, um, and then when that command was given, they, they acted on it and instantly got healed. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. You know, um, you, you have to understand, um, sometimes there's, there's a command given for you to release your faith. And at that point in time, you know, faith can arise and you can act on that. Um, so you could come into a situation where there is no, you don't have faith, a command's given, you believe that, act on it, and faith arises and you get the results. Did you know you can, you can come with faith and not act on it and you won't get the result? Um, you remember in the book of Acts where uh, there was a man that was impotent in his feet and the same heard Paul preach and Paul looking on him perceiving that he had faith to be healed said unto him rise take up your bed and walk and immediately he received that strength on his ankles and began walking leaping and praising God now, now wait a second all you need is faith. No, no, no. You've got to act on your faith. When, even when you have faith, you've got to act on your faith. You can't just say, well, I've got faith. That's all I need. Some people go around and say, all you need is your faith. All you need to do is believe. Well, you see, you've got to take the whole Bible in context. You know, only believe. Well, um, if you take believing to mean to believe, to believe what God's Word says, to believe God, and then to, to act on it because of that, that, that story I was just telling is in Acts 14, 8 through 10. Okay. I, I just love this. The same heard Paul speaking steadfastly and beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed. But he's still there. I said he's still there. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Praise God. That's enough to make you shout, isn't it? I said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so, this man comes to Jesus, and he's heard of Jesus, he, and there's an element of faith in that if Jesus comes, he'll get healed. But, um, and Jesus makes a statement, and then, and then he, he says, man, come on, my son's going to die. And Jesus said, your son lives. And the Bible says this. It says, and he believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him, and when he just like, okay, walked off. And um, I, I like the way the story continues. It says, and now when he was going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. And then he acquired of them the hour he, he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever, ha the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. Now, he didn't rush home. They, meet, they come meet him on the way home. It's the next day they run into him. He's still, he's still just, well, he believed it. Went his way. Got it. I got it. Amen. But notice, and this will help you, this will help us uh, in a lot of places. Um, you know, Jesus can in some uh, cases or in some ways could be uh, viewed as the manifestation of grace to humanity. And I don't want to get into a big theological statement about my, uh, I'm trying to make a point here. And even the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, said, go thy way, the Son liveth. But yet the Scriptures took the time to say, and he believed. You see, Jesus speaking it without him believing it would have not resulted in that. Amen? I said it, it, it required his believing in that particular case. Well, I mean, when you're receiving, it takes, you have to believe and receive what God said. And so God has wonderful things for us. Healing belongs to us as part of our covenant right. Um, but we have to believe and act on it. Believe that it's so. It belongs to us because Jesus paid the price for it. But you know what? Salvation belongs to every human. But if you don't believe, you don't get it. 
Well, I don't believe that. Well, Peter said, believe on the, on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved in your whole house. I mean, uh, repent. Be baptized, everyone, in the name of the Lord. Be saved. Uh, you, there is action on the part of the believer that demonstrates believing that is required to receive that which God has procured and provided for you. And without it, you get nothing. We'll just quote the Georgia prophet. <laughs> Amen. As the scripture saith, he that believeth nothing receiveth nothing. That's the Pastor Ed Taylor paraphrase edition. Um, let's, let's go over here in Matthew chapter 8. Glory to God. So the man believed Jesus and got what he wanted. Amen. I said the man believed Jesus and he got what he wanted. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, Matthew chapter 8. I've already figured out something. I like this little experiment with sitting down. We're going to have to find something that's more comfortable than this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shopping for me a, a, a comfortable uh, seat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Matthew eight fourteen. Hallelujah. You know what? Mark 14 is a really good passage of Scripture, but it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And that's where I was. <laughs> Mark, I was over in Mark 8, 14. All right. Verse 14 of Matthew chapter 8 says, and when, Peter, and, when, and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Oh, Peter had a wife. Now, I just, you know, I mean, since Peter's the first pope, I just want everybody to know Peter had a wife. Amen. You can't have a mother-in-law without a wife. They just, they just come together. <laughs> Amen. You don't get the mother-in-law without the wife. And, uh, and I know some people would say it's sad to say they don't get the wife without the mother-in-law. <laughs> that was a joke. Hallelujah. <laughs> there have been cases that uh, I'm getting amen sometimes. Yeah. All right. And she was sick of a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. Administrated unto them. Uh, administrated. And ministered. Praise God. Unto them. Well, thank God. You know, Jesus came in and ministered life to her and she was healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Mark's gospel says this in verse, chapter 1, verse 30. But Simon's wife's mother, that's that mother-in-law thing again. They sick of a fever, and anon, uh, they told him, that means straight away. Uh, that's the only time it's used in the whole New Testament. I don't know why they used it. Uh, tell, they, they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And then Luke 4, 38 through 39 says, um, And she arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. So uh, Jesus just just took authority over that and you know thank God thank God as believers with the name of Jesus we have authority to take authority <laughs> okay okay we'll get cute we have the exorcia to take authority over the over the devil amen praise God now um let me say um I, I believe that it's it's a whole lot easier to get people healed when they request that you come minister to them Amen. It's just a whole lot easier. Now, when, when second cousin Louie asks you to go minister to Aunt Louise, and she don't really care if you're there or not, you, mean, you just, I mean, you're going to be hard, hard, hard to get anything done. Yep. You go and you, you share, you minister, you talk, you, you share the scriptures. And, um, but if they don't want you there, you know what I'm saying? Um, so but some people say, well, I went and prayed for someone and they didn't get healed. I mean, it must not have been God's will to heal them. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I went to the hospital to minister to someone one time, and, uh, and they were too busy watching as the stomach churns. They dodged me trying to see the TV. I'm there. You know, the preacher came, brought, and brought um, at the time we had an assistant pastor, and brought him with me. And so she had to dodge two of us. She was dodging both of us. We were trying to move around, get out of her way, and we moved right into her way. <laughs> well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, you, just, you know, just 
uh, there's not a lot you can do if they don't want, if they're not really interested in what you're there for. It's not. So I'll, I'll say this: when people have success, it's because they people wanted them there. I uh, had a lady that was in our church, came to our church, came to our church at stage four, and came more out of came out of desperation, not out of faith. You understand what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're hoping you got the magic potion. And, um, and, and how do you know that? Because they wouldn't do the things that, that they needed to position themselves for a miracle. Now, uh, I mean, I remember the first time she came in. She had, she had said she had visited years before. I didn't really remember her real well. Um, so, but she said she had visited a couple times a year for special meetings. So, you know, she has special meetings, got a bunch of people. Sometimes it's hard to remember if you, if you really remember somebody or not. But uh, she got desperate, desperate, and then came to the church, hoping the church had the, the magic whatever. And um, so began to, to share with her and uh, things she needed, not, not only needed, had to do. And she wanted to live. Gave her every book we had. Got got we had you know, the we had the uh, tape library. So we got out. We got the healing tapes out. I mean, you know, gave them to her. Get, we had we had um, uh, cassette players that we would we would let people check out. Got that. I did. And we took it all over there. Set her up. And um, come back and visit again. Said, "Well, Dan, you've been reading the books." No, I just didn't feel too good. But the TV been on. How you know? I heard it when I got there. You hear it on. You, you, it's funny how people scramble when the preacher shows up. <laughs> TV goes off, you know. <laughs> and my, back in the old days, you could still see the dot in the middle, but you can't do that anymore. Remember? Do you remember? remember you, how many ever used to, as a kid, watch that thing go down to a dot and just sit there until it finally disappeared? <laughs> I did it too. Praise God. It's like, you know, listen, once they played the Star Spangled Banner, that was it. You know what I'm saying? Dun, 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 dun. And when that happened, that went off, it went to that. And when you turn it off, it went down that little dot. <laughs> well, so you could tell people been watching TV when you walked in, the little dot was still there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Especially if they had an old TV or whatever. So, um, and so, well, you know, you need to listen. Listen. Yeah, and ask them. They're, they're in bed. They're feeling so bad sometimes in bed. You say, are you playing the tapes? Uh, it hurts. Their, you know, it hurts. Their, it makes them feel bad to hear the tape playing. You're dying. Are you willing to fight for your life? You know, they, just, they just hope you got the abracadabra. And see, healing don't work abracadabra. Amen. Now, if we have a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, I guess you might want to could call it that, but that's, that's still not an abracadabra. That's God doing something supernaturally outside uh, of even sometimes our, our faith. Amen. So, uh, Jesus re coming over and rebuking the fever and leaving her, I, I, you know, um, they besought him for her. Remember? But I, I, I also have to believe she wanted him there and was willing to, to receive. Um, but just know this, don't, don't feel like you're a, a, a ministry failure as a, as, a, as a Christian. When you go to minister to somebody and, and they're too busy watching TV or, or too busy uh, garnering all the sympathy they, sympathy they can get out of their sickness. Hello. I had a grandmama, boy, she, you'd ask her how she's doing, she'd tell you everything was wrong with her. Grandmama, let's pray for you. You pray for her, I mean, she'd get to speaking in tongues, hallelujah, and then get done, she'd go right back talking about what she had. <laughs> like, now, Grandmama, we ain't going to just do no good to pray for you. You go turn right around when we get done praying and go back to talking about what you got. And she's a Pentecostal lady. Amen. Love the Lord. You know, you get to praying with her and she'd get to speaking in tongues. Now, not much, a couple of words. The old Pentecost, a lot of the old Pentecostals, it was, it was a, it was like this, this whole event that you couldn't, you, you just, you had to be in a certain state of ecstasy to get there. And, uh, but we, we lay hands on pray for, you know, she had the birth side us with the rheumatoid or the, you know, some, some acre pain somewhere. You know, some folks got them labeled. <laughs> and you're right where they are. I got this over here, and I got that back here, and I got this over here, and that over there. You know, they, and it's this conversation piece. Not, it's hard to get people healed when all their ailments are a conversation piece. 
So, um, uh, just just understand the dynamic of humanity, and if if you can't get them moved out of those things, you're gonna have a difficult time getting anything to them. And, and it's not it has nothing to do with whether it's God's will or not. God's will is already established. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen? God's Word has been sent to heal us. It is God's will to heal. Um, now let me, let me also state this, because a lot of times um, when we talk along these lines, and we're talking about what people don't do, um, people, can get, you know, people can get testy. Relatives of people who died and stuff can get testy because, well, you're saying you're saying that grandma wasn't a good person, or you're saying that my, my aunt wasn't a good person. No, 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 no. no they, you can love the Lord. I mean, you can love Jesus with all your heart and still die sick because you didn't take the steps to get healed. It doesn't make you a bad Christian. It just makes you one that got to go home earlier. Amen? But when we're teaching, we have to be realistic about the biblical approach and what we're dealing with, and you're not going to get people healed who aren't interested in being healed. You know, talk to somebody. Ah, I, I, I used to talk to my grandmama. Yeah, one of these days, the Lord's going. You know what? Now, grandmama, <laughs> how many more times can you say one of these days? You know, Jesus is already born it. But you see, when you're, when, what it is is they're not they're not in faith. They're they're, they're in the the hope sows. They hope that one of these days they actually do get it. They hope they're one of the, one, the lucky ones to show up on the spiritual healing lottery and it actually comes through for them. Amen. And, um, you know, and they would give God all the credit, but they're not in faith about it. They really don't believe that when you prayed for them, they got it. How do you know? You can tell by their conversation. Now, remember that no man... Um, when he, when he, uh, Jesus said, your son liveth, he went his way. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't make, you know, buy an um, a overnight express home. He was still, go, he was still just taking his time. They had to come meet him, tell him, hey. And then he, well, what time was it when it happened? Oh, it was that seventh time. Oh, that same time that I believed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, so I understand that when you're dealing with these things, and, and as a body of Christ, um, we not only want you to, you know, to establish that healing is God's will, but we also want you to be effective at going out and ministering to people. That, that's, you know, part of, part of our job as pastors and ministers is not only to teach you doctrine, but to train you into going out and doing the things for God, for the, for the work of the ministry, to mature you into the doing the work of the ministry. So you're going to encounter people. Now, let me say this. This primarily applies to believers. You don't expect the unbeliever to get in faith. You can't, how are you going to tell the unbeliever to get in faith? He don't believe. That's, he's called an unbeliever. The title by virtue means he doesn't believe. Well, what can he believe for? Salvation. There is a grace. Remember this, what, what it says, many, as many as, um, hold on. I read it Sunday. I'm going to, I'm going to quote it right. I don't want to misquote it. Here you go. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. So really what you, you have, you will have the faith to believe Jesus is Lord. And until that, that's about as far as you can go. You got the faith, right? because when the minute you receive him, he gives you the power to become the son of God. And then your faith kicks up to a different level. It begins to operate in a different manner. Now I know some people say, well, I, you know, I'm just saying from a doctrinal position, the scripture teaches us that you receive the Lord and become a son of God. He gives you the power to become a son of God. And at that point, the faith, you know, you can't go around and have, you know, start saying, well, I'm using my faith for a car. Are you saved? No, I just use my faith for a car. Well, now you're operating in some other areas because you're not really believing God. How can you believe God? You don't even know him. Amen. Uh, what God does give us is the faith to receive Jesus as Lord. Amen. And once you've received him as Lord, then that faith takes on a different dynamic to believing God for all of what his word teaches and so forth. Um, 
And, and this is, you know, when I say born again, you have to understand we're talking about New Testament terminology and we're in a covenant. In the Old Testament, they weren't born again. They were under a covenant and they believed according to the covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, um, but trying to get unbelievers to believe is silly. It's just silly. I said it's silly. Now, use your faith. Believe that God wants to heal you. No, 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 no. You just, we lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Yeah. Amen. You keep that. But the, the believers to, is to believe what God's word says for themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's, let's talk about the healing of the leper in Matthew 8, 2. It says, Behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt. I love this passage of scripture. Thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I made you this way. I put leprosy all over you to teach you a lesson. And since today you've come to me and, and I perceive you've learned your lesson, be clean. And his leprosy was cleansed. You know what it says? That's not what it says. You know, when you take these, when you put religious glasses on, you see stuff differently than it really is. There came a leper and worshiped him and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, one, one thing we can deduct from this right away is um, people usually don't have an, a, a, a problem with believing God can. You could take most agnostics or atheists and ask them a question, and they would, they would go from this point, well, if there were a God, sure he could. It's a concept, if, if, if there was a, a being that was as the concept of God is, to an atheist and agnostic, then he would be able to do anything. So, uh, this leper came to him. He did not question God's ability. The question that had to be answered was God's willingness. Amen. God's willingness. Because until you know the will of God... You can't have faith. F.F. Um, F. Bosworth used to say, and then Dad Hagen uh, picked it up and began to use it. Um, faith begins where the will of God is known. Now, I, I say F.F. F. Bosworth. You know, back then it could have been Brother Hagen said it and Bosworth heard about it, or Brother Bosworth said it and Brother Hagen heard about it, but I've heard both of them say it. So, you know, Bosworth and Hagen both used to say, um, it, faith begins where the will of God's known. Amen. You, you can't have faith until you know what his will is. See, as long as you don't know what the will is, how can you have faith in it? Now, Pastor Ed, all right, let's say, say I went out yesterday and I, I stopped over here at the, uh, at the uh, gas station up there at Groomtown at 85. They sell, they sell Cheerwine slushies in there. So I do stop in there. Okay, and they sell bottled cheer wines and bottled RCs and bottled sun drops all with sugar in them. I like that. Hallelujah. Praise God. And moon pies. All right. Get an RC cola and a moon pie. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glass bottle RC cola with pure sugar in it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anyway, sometimes I get them double decker moon pies. Mmm. Um, but I stopped, but they sell lottery tickets. And I stopped in there, I bought lottery. And he had 80 million bucks. Praise God, hallelujah. After taxes, I get 50 million. And uh, so now Pastor Ed's got $50 million in the bank. And you want some of it. But what is the question that you don't have answered? Will I give you any? He's got it. He could. I sure wish he would. But you just don't know if I will. So we're all here on Wednesday night. We got the, you know, y'all are here. And I just, you know, I, I say, look, guys, after church come up, I have already uh, gone to the bank and had cashier's checks cut in the sum of $500,000. Uh, I have one for everybody here tonight. Praise the Lord. What are you, what are you doing? Some of you aren't even waiting for the service to be over. I mean, I, I, I'd hold them up and show them to you. Here they are. You know, I'll fill in your name as soon as you come up here. They're already made out. All I got to do is put your name on them. Now, what are you going to do at the church? Get up and walk out. What would Jeff say? He's going to dance up front. Yeah. Why? Because you know my will. 
Now you may have thought, man, I sure wish Pastor would give me some money. He's got $50 million in the bank. Oh, praise God. I'd like to have just a, just a little, just have some of that. But when I say and then tell you what I will give you, amen, and I got a check for everybody here. I just don't believe anybody here is going to get up and walk out without getting the check first. And some of you might come back here and just go right on out the back door with it. It don't matter. You're going to get your check. Hello. Why? Because now you know my will. Before, you, 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 you might want to, I wish I could ask him. You could have come and said, now, Pastor Ed, I know you can give me $20,000. But will you? Now, both of you know who I, how I am and how, kind of character I am. The, those who know me would, 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 would be pretty close to figuring I would, but just not sure. So, and, and you look at me, and I say, I will. Then what happens to you immediately when I say I will? Something changes. You're no longer hoping I'll do it. You know I'll do it. Amen? It went from hoping and wishing that I would do something like that to I will do something like that. And you know it. And you have a knowledge of that will. And so now you're, you're okay. Well, when can I get it? You know, you ask for 20000 When can I get it? Well, look, at your service, I'm going to go back to my office. I got, I got my checkbook in there. I'll write you a check. You ain't leaving the bill. You'll follow me like a hound dog on a trail. Amen. You see me go in my office? You're going to send the kids around to the other door to make sure I don't duck out. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because you want your check. Because I told you I'd do it. All right. So this, this leper came and said, I know you can, but are you willing? And Jesus puts forth his hand and touches him and does this. He says, I will. Why? Because he had to move the, the leper from not knowing the will of God to knowing the will of God in order for him to receive. And the minute he said, I will, it changed the whole dynamic because now it's not a matter. He knew he could. He said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. That's King Jimmy for, I know you can, but are you willing? And so Jesus goes, hey, I will be cleansed. It changed the whole dynamic once the guy knew his will. The moment it was established that it was his will to do it, he already knew that he had the ability. It changed it, and he says, I will be thou clean, and his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And the other, other, other two Gospels, Mark and Luke, also bear this out. And um, that he was, and of course, Jesus tells him, don't tell anybody, just go show yourself to the priest. Offer the gift that Moses commanded. Listen, they, were, there was a, they could offer a gift. They could be cleansed under the Old Testament of leprosy. There, there, was a, there was a way to be cleansed, and they just didn't act on it. Everybody got caught up with, the, with, the, with, with the, what they saw. And, if they, and, and, when, and the command said, when you were, were cleansed, you were to go offer a special gift. My, my, my. They were, they were permitted to be healed of leprosy. A lot of people didn't. <laughs> Don't even know if there, anybody ever did have to you know, get, get to go show their gift to Mo, of Moses told them to until Jesus showed up. Remember the ten, ten lepers that came to him? He said, go your way. Go, go offer, you know, the priest, you know, the, uh, the gift as Moses commanded to the priest. And as they went, uh, they were healed. But one turned and came back and worshiped him. He said, where, uh, where, where are the nine? Where are there not ten? And he, he told the guy, he said, thy faith hath made thee whole. Wasn't just healed, he was whole. He got his nose back, his fingertips back, ears back. Amen, kind of like that country song. We play country song backwards. Get your get your uh, get your car back. Get your house back. Get your wife back. Get your three kids back. <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, this leper, you know, he went he went worship. He got made whole. He got his ears back. Got his nose back. Got his fingers back. Got his toes back. Praise God. Amen. He he was made whole. He wasn't just healed. He was made. He wasn't just cleansed of the leprosy. He got restored that which the leprosy had had eaten off of his body. Praise God. I said, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to stop right here tonight.